Good morning, YouTubers. T Square with T Square Talk. I hope everybody's having a great Friday. I got an exciting video for you guys today, and it kind of branches a little bit off from all of the comments that we received on yesterday's video. Yesterday, we did a video um, about how much gold or silver or precious metals you need, and if stuff really starts tanking and stuff gets difficult. And we got a lot of interesting comments, everything from your gold and silver ain't gonna buy you jack when the economy tanks and people are struggling, to some really good tips that I think is important for people to consider and it's worth talking about. So we're gonna talk about that today, mostly the tips idea and the you're not gonna be able to do anything with gold and silver if everything tanks. I, I disagree with that, we're gonna talk a little bit about it um, and hopefully you guys enjoy the video. If you do enjoy the video, please take a quick minute, hit that thumbs up button for me, help me out, leave me a comment, let me know your thoughts. Maybe you got a tip that somebody else will really appreciate hearing and the comments are what generates the video. I, I try to focus on what you guys want. So if there's a topic that you want to know more about, please leave a comment and let me know. If you want to, please take a quick minute, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And as an ultimate, um, if you're interested in becoming a member, it is something that we have set up now. Uh, it's a great deal. It's only $1.99 a month to join. And you, your comments go directly to my phone. So I get to reply back to your comments. I never miss one of your comments. And we do some sort of a members only event every month where you have a shot at winning some free silver. Now to have a shot at winning a free ounce of silver for a buck 99, it's a pretty good deal. It's a free event, but it is only available to members um, as an extra way to help uh, kind of push the channel. So with that being said, let's get jumped in and start talking about today's video because I think it's a really important topic. So the first thing that we're gonna cross out is the comment that your gold and your silver is not gonna do nothing for you if things collapse. So there has always been stackers and there always will be stackers. Did they always call them stackers? No, some call them just people trying to preserve their wealth that know what's going on and that things at some point are only gonna get worse. Um, you're always gonna have people with more fiat currency than they know what to do with. And you're always gonna have people out there that are looking to protect their fiat currency. If let's say you have a successful business, you probably are putting away money in the form of fiat currency because that's what a lot of average people do. I know a lot of people, I come from a, a family that have owned multiple businesses and I've hung out a lot with people that own businesses. And I know that a lot of them are holding a good amount of cash. They're not educated on gold and silver. In fact, they don't even believe in this stuff. This coin is just driving me nuts that it keeps rolling behind the other one, especially because it's one of my favorite coins. It's the uh, Britannia Liberty coin. Um, and so these people have cash. When they see prices skyrocketing, what are they gonna be doing? They're gonna be looking, oh my word, why is prices going up so fast? At some point, someone is gonna end up in their circle of friends and they're gonna be like, inflation's because they just keep printing more money. And that's making the money we have worth less and less. And they're gonna get a quick, hardcore, hard crash lesson in what we talk about every day. To us, we understand inflation is the creation of more fiat dollars and it's making the price of everything go up. But a lot of people don't understand that. I mean, I met with one guy, he had literally 10 grand buried in his backyard in small bills for when stuff collapsed. He said, when everything crashes, I'm gonna have ones, fives, and tens, and I'll be all right. When the banks shut down, I'll have this. And, and I remember sitting down with him and telling him, let me ask you this. If everything collapses and you have enough food for your family, would you trade it for bills? He goes, um, I, I assume so, why wouldn't I? And I said, well, if you need food more than you need money, 
you know, and you can't go to the store and buy anything because the stores say this isn't a worst case scenario because the stores essentially aren't selling because no one's going to go to work. If you're not making enough money at work to get by, you're not going to go to work. If there's no security at your store and people are going crazy in the streets, you're not going to go to work. Therefore, stores are not going to be open. And if they happen to try to open, they're probably going to end up like New York or California or Detroit. Um, you know, it only makes sense. So he's like, well, then what would I have to do? I said, it's going to come down to what you have already. And that brings us into a kind of, uh, uh, I'm going to kind of overlap circles here for a minute. It kind of brings us into the next category of, you know, the idea of precious metals being your savior. Precious metals is not going to be your savior. And and I know some people that are religious, even when I said it, I was like, well, I mean, I realize I'm I'm a religious person. So I would put God first in my life. But I this is about what you can do for yourself. And so you you need to put food and water up there. Food and water has to come before precious metals. Uh, you know, I, I had a great comment that said, uh, you know, pay off your house first. Get your house paid off before you start stacking silver. Get your car paid off before you start stacking silver. And that's true. You want to have your house paid off, your car paid off. You really want to live debt free. The ultimate goal is to be debt free. And then what do you do with the extra cash that you're producing? If you don't know how to save money at all, you spend it as quick as you get it, then stacking precious metals, gold, silver, is a great way to save. I mean, right here in front of you is probably, I mean, it's got to be three, dollars $4,000 sitting there. I don't know how many ounces are there, but I can tell you 100 ounces right now is going to be roughly minimum $3,100 maybe. Um, and so with that being said, and that's not going to be those ounces, that's going to be whatever ounces they want to give you. Um, but with that being said, you know, paying off your bills first is, is, should be your number one objective. After that, you should have a small stockpile of food and water. Uh, even if it's just cheap things like beans and rice, a well, some kind of method to get drinking water if things break down. After that, you need a means to protect it because as we've seen, as stuff starts collapsing, uh, I'd want to have some sort of protection. Now, everybody might live in different countries. Obviously, here in the United States, we have certain amendments that gives us rights in that area. I, I try to st I'm trying to stay away from certain words so I don't get in trouble. Uh, but if you live in a place that doesn't allow the same methods of security that we allow in the United States, then you might have to get some, I don't know, bear spray, pepper spray, who knows, whatever. Um, but you need to have some sort of protection because once you have something, you run the risk of someone trying to take it from you. After that, once your bills are paid, you have some food, water saved up, you're rotating it really good, you've got a means of protection, then that's where you start stacking. You start putting away some extra money every month if things, nothing bad happens, if nothing bad happens, it's great. Then you keep going down the road you're on. You a little extra money every month you put away and you're saving it. You're stacking it. If an emergency comes up, you can always sell your ounces. If nothing bad happens, great. But if stuff does break down, precious metals comes in handy. If a small emergency happens, you can sell some of it to get the items you need to get your car fixed, to get your AC fixed. Someone's going to joke with me right now and be like, dude, you should fix your AC or your car with your silver. Um, no, I don't want to because at this point, uh, I mean, I'm on my second year having car minor car troubles. My car still gets me from point A to point B. It's a rough vehicle, and, and you know why? In those two years... I held off on buying. I've seen car prices plunge, especially on new trucks. Do I want to buy a new vehicle? No, but at this point, 0% on a new vehicle versus 7 8% on a used vehicle, mm, for me, I might take the new one. 
There's not much of a difference between used and new values right now either. A new truck might run, I was talking to someone today, might run 35,000. A used truck can be 28,000. Uh, by the time you factor out that 0% interest versus uh, 8% interest, 7% interest, it, it makes sense in some cases. Now, I'm not going to sit here and, and argue vehicles with anybody. Uh, some people will say, no, you're better off to buy used. And sometimes that is the case. With that being said, though, back on precious metals. Got diverted a little bit there. Precious metals is a means of trade. Despite what people are going to tell you, oh, who in their right mind would trade food during an apocalyptic scenario when, you know, food is number one of value? Why would you want gold or silver? You know, here, here's what I would make the argument. You look at Venezuela. They've been trading and still like silver now more than ever. They were trading precious metals shortly after their collapse. It had value and they recognized it. You know, the idea of precious metals that, oh, you'll never make anything off precious metals. That's not true either. Um, you know, you can make money off precious metals. However, do you want to be sitting on a bunch of fiat cash? I buy precious metals because it is a savings account. It is a true, true savings account. It stores my wealth, my that, my money, my hard-earned labor, and I can use it down the road. And if stuff collapses, there's always going to be someone that's going to want it. Even in some of the poorest countries in the world, you guys know I'm fixing to travel or I'm fixing to try to start planning a trip to the Philippines. And that trip is not going to be planned out like next week or something. It's going to take a lot of time. But I find it interesting that even over there, a super poor country, people buy gold and silver. I was like, what? They barely have money to get by and they're buying gold and silver? They got casinos. They got people that have money. They got people that don't have money. I mean, there's always going to be that everywhere you go. Even if the U.S. was to hypothetically collapse, there's going to be people with money. You think if stuff collapsed that Elon Musk wouldn't start buying up silver? He knows things would get better eventually. You think people in other countries that are not collapsed are not going to all of a sudden, they're not going to want gold and silver? They're going to understand that the economy is tanking, stocks are tanking. Where do you put your fiat dollars before they are worthless? Do I think they're going to become worthless overnight? No. But what do you do with all that cash that you saved up? When you see prices doubling, if, if tomorrow you woke up and we saw this month another 5%, next month another 8% inflation, next month a 12% inflation, before you know it, inflation is just eating you up. Are you going to keep holding fiat dollars? Are you going to keep holding fiat currency? The stock market's plunging. Are you going to hold stocks? Cryptocurrencies are, are dropping by the dozen. They're just falling out of the sky, literally plunging in value. They have no real useful value, I'll say. You know, it, it, it has value because people want it right now. But look how it held up during the crash that we saw a couple weeks ago. I mean, it plunged. I mean, what's Bitcoin at now? 58,000? How low is it going to go? All of a sudden, cryptos are plunging. Are you going to want to be buying cryptos? No. Gold and silver is holding on pretty well. Despite what people are going to tell you, gold and silver went down. Gold's $40 off from its all-time high. Silver, what, $4 off from its 11-year high? Why do you think people are buying gold and silver? Oh, well, people ain't buying. It's just the big banks. You know, big banks are buying it. Yeah. Why do you think they're buying it? Because they know what's coming. But here's the thing. A lot of average Joes like me and you and other people watching this video, they're buying it too. They're buying it too because they know what's coming. They want to be in the front line. I want to be on the front line. The banks guarantee they're in the front line. They're buying it up because they understand that the dollar is losing value faster and faster. And one day it's going to be like a switch. 
your dollars are going to lose value big time. And if you're holding a lot of them, you know, one of the comments that I saw said you should have tens of thousands of dollars in, of dry powder. I don't want that much in dry powder. Do I keep a thousand or two thousand? Yeah. I mean, what do I spend a month? I mean, I might spend five hundred bucks a month on miscellaneous stuff. My my power bill last month was fifty four dollars. My water bill last month was the bare minimum you could spend, which is eighty five dollars, which is crazy for how little water I use. Um, I really recycle a lot of water. All my rainwater, I recycle all that. Um, I don't drink it. I don't shower with it, obviously. Um, but I use it for my plants. I use it for my gardening. I use it for a lot of different stuff. Uh, you know, people don't need that much cash, as much cash as they have. Once people start realizing that, you're going to see precious metals take off. And then they're going to be frantically explaining why you don't want they'll beat down the price they'll try to beat down the price but that ain't gonna help we saw what happened you beat down the price more people are gonna buy in i don't know how many people said they would love to see silver get tanked and that way they could get one more last big buy i i read a comment that said i would like to see uh them raise interest rates 20 percent. do you know what that would do to silver he knew exactly what it would do. Yeah, it would plunge the price and I would be able to buy even more. And and it makes sense. You know, the truth of the matter is, what do you think they're going to do? Do you think they're going to do the right thing anyway and raise interest rates, skyrocket them to where people essentially have to stop borrowing money and all they can do is just pay their bills and get by? No, they thrive on free money. They thrive on lending. And they can't, even the government now can't afford to have high interest rates. They're having a hard time at 5.5% with 50, uh, with 34, 5 billion now. 35, I'm sorry, 35 trillion in debt. And they're paying 5.5% interest rate. They can't keep that up. Our debt is just blowing up like crazy. And once people realize that, that there's no coming out of that, it's like you being in debt and not being able to get out. You need to prepare for what's coming. This is not meant to fear longer anybody. This is meant for people to think. To think for themselves. Use your brain. Think about it. And and truly think. They've been keeping us locked up in a matrix. They spoon feed us the information they want us to know. They put it on the news, on every channel. I watched a clip on YouTube a while back. It had like 20 different news clips and everyone verbatim said the same thing. You know, inflation's coming down. It, it's The economy's getting gray. On and on and on and on. And the same, it was like they were all reading a script. I couldn't believe when I seen it. Every different news channel. I said, that is ridiculous. And people believe that. I mean, you ask yourself, you go to the grocery store, are prices coming down? No. I had a conversation with a friend of mine at a restaurant today. I said, I said, what do you think? He goes, no. I said, he said, everything's going up. Oil's going up. Gas going up. Transportation of goods is going up. Food's going up. We have to mark the stuff up. Less people are going out to eat. Why are less people going out to eat? Because they can't afford it. You know, some people make excuses. Oh, everybody's going back to school. That's why less people are eating out. It does play a factor, but it's not the only factor. Think about it. Back to school means busy days for people. That would be when I would think I would want to eat out. You know, I've been working all day, kids in school all day. I come home, I'm tired. I want to just eat, eat out. Whether it's fast food or a restaurant or something, I want to eat out. I definitely don't want to go home and cook, but they're trying to tell people that, oh no, that's just, you know, people aren't eating out as much because they're back to school and, you know, that's it. No, that's not the reason why. The reason why is people are running out of money. They're going broke. They can't afford credit cards anymore. It, it's not coming to an end. And will it change under a new administration? Personally, I feel bad saying this. I don't think it will. Because no matter who is in office, 
Politicians are going to want to spend money, whether it's on handout social programs or on military uh, infrastructure. You know, it doesn't matter. They're all going to want to spend. No one is going to do what they have to do and balance the budget. But with that being said, we're going to wrap up here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I enjoyed making the video. And once again, if you're still here, please hit that thumbs up button if you haven't hit it yet. Leave me a comment and uh, let me know your thoughts. I do get the best videos are usually from comments like you, from you. So thank you all for watching. I will see you guys again on T-Square Talk tomorrow. I hope you all have a great weekend. If you're not going to be online and going to miss the weekend videos, uh, I'm going to try to put up a bunch of short videos over the next couple days. Uh, I'm trying to get my numbers up. Last month, I waited till the end of the month, and I never caught my milestone for the month. And I got notified from YouTube. Uh, so I am trying to meet certain objecti objectives. Uh, so I'm going to try to up my numbers over the weekend now instead of waiting till the last weekend of the month and do it. But thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys again on T-Square Talk. Take care, everybody. Have a great one. Keep stacking. We saw a nice jump today. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more of a pullback before September. And then after September, when they cut rates, I think it's all up. So we'll see what happens. Take care, everybody, and have a great one. Bye-bye.